Hey guys, Pro 1701 here, and today we're going to talk about Doctor Who the Collection. And I'm basically going to talk about <clears throat> how interesting I think it is with the release of Season 9 that we are halfway through the classic Doctor Who collection range. Uh, you know, not counting a potential Wilderness Years box set, which I certainly hope we get, but just looking at the original 26 seasons, that uh, we're halfway through now. And it's been an interesting five years uh, since I started collecting these, of course, in July of 2018 when uh, season 12 came out. Uh, it's been an interesting five years for sure, for so many reasons. Um, but now that we're halfway through the range, I think it's a good time to look back and reflect on it and uh, talk about not only uh, the releases and the release order, but also talk about how the artwork has changed and become more elaborate and interesting as they've gone on. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed all of the special features. The Behind the Sofa, I really love Behind the Sofa. It's one of my favorite things to watch on there. I like that they've expanded from two different sofas to like three sofas, uh, usually one with three people, oftentimes TARDIS Team 5, and then two more with two people. I do wish they would bring uh, maybe some more of the modern Who people in. Like I loved having Sasha for season eight. That was really neat. So you could see Delgado's master. Uh, and of course, I hope we get Tom back maybe for another one of his sets um, with the COVID stuff dying down. Hopefully he'll feel comfortable getting back out because uh, I always love having Tom on there. It's just fun listening to Tom talk. But you know, watching the Doctor's Table, I hope they do more of the Doctor's Table. I loved them bringing back the Doctor Who cookbook, the Who's Doctor Who Revisited. And uh, I love the making ofs, the ones they poured over from the DVDs and the new ones they do for the sets. I love the fact they bring over so many extras, so many uh, DVD extras, so many things, you know, buried down in the archives they've done up. I love the Panopticum interviews a lot of times, especially like if John Pertwee's there. I love listening to John Pertwee talk. Um, I love listening to him tell the story about him and Patrick Troughton conning together when he pretty much convinced Troughton to start conning. That was awesome. Uh, when he talks about deep sea diving and stuff, John, John Pertwee just seemed like he led a heck of a life. I love listening to him talk. So it's got all of these extra goodies that I just love. So first I'll talk about the release order and my thoughts on it. <coughs> now I think releasing season 12 first was the right decision and a very clever idea. I think if you're going to do something like this, especially if you're not sure if it's gonna sell, how it's going to do, I think you come out swinging with a Tom Baker season. Because when it comes to classic Who, I think for a lot of people, Tom Baker simply is the doctor. Um, and so I, I think his first season is the way to go. Season 12 is part of the Hinchcliffe era, which is heralded as easily one of Doctor Who's high points. Uh, and you have so many good stories. You have two bona fide masterpiece classics in it with the Ark in Space and Genesis of the Daleks. Uh, you have Robot, which is a great first story for a Doctor. Um, Sultaran Experiment, which is a good two-parter. It might not be the most interesting to some people, but it's only a two-parter, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. And I think it's one of the best portrayals of a Suntaran in it. Um, and then Revenge of the Cybermen, which I know isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I love Revenge of the Cybermen. And it's the only 70s Cyberman story, and one of the best Cybermen stories, in my opinion. Um, I can actually say, I think Revenge of the Cybermen is the best 70s Cyberman story. Debate me. <laughs> People will start getting down in the comments. Oh yeah, there's the book of this and the big finish audio of this. <laughs> but I, I think that was a good one to start out with. I know uh, it was a little risky, especially with uh, all of it having to be upscale. There's no uh, film, surviving film elements from this season. So it all has to be upscale. Because even though Suntaran Experiment was a location shoot, it was one of those rare occasions where instead of using film, they used... The, the outdoor standard cameras, the video cameras for that. So it is standard definition. So it's all upscale, but it is a good way to start off the series. Now, next we got season 19, which I also think was a good choice. One, we start out with a 70 season and then we get an 80 season. I think 19 is the best way to go because it's kind of the holy grail for HD uh, footage because all of the location work for season 19 survives. And so we can actually see those scenes in true HD. And that's fantastic. And they look glorious. Now, not every story has location work, but for stuff like Castrovalva, uh, The Visitation, and Black Orchid, their location shots and scenes look 
beautiful. They look so good. I'm not a huge fan of Black Orchid, but I love how good the location work looks on it, like when the doctor's playing cricket and stuff. And then I really enjoy the visitation as a story as a whole, but the location work on it looks stunning. And even the beginning of Earthshock, I believe, has a little location work, which looks good, uh, right before they go into the caves. So it's a strong season two. Uh, I think it's Davison's best season. Uh, it has stories I enjoy in it. Like my probably my two of my favorite two of my favorite Davison stories are Castrovalva and Fort of Doomsday. I just love those stories a lot, and they have strong rewatchability for me. Uh, you have Earth Shock right there, which of course is a classic and a fantastic Cybermen story. Yes, I will I will concede that Earth Shock is better than Revenge of the Cybermen. I will freely admit that. Despite having a lesser Doctor and lesser companions, it's still a more epic, better story, even if they share similar plots. Uh, Earthshock is good. Time Flight, I enjoy. Even if it's not the best in the world, I enjoy it. Black Orchid, again, is an okay watch. Really, the only one holding this down for me is Kendo, which I think is awful. But a lot of people like Kendo, so that's another strong choice. So I think that was a good decision to go ahead and do Season 19. Now, I was surprised that 18 came next. I would not have thought they would do Tom Baker's final season as his next release. I figured they would have done maybe another Tom Baker season. I wouldn't think they would jump straight to his final season this early. Now, it makes sense we get another 80s season out. Also, since Castrovalva, Keeper of Trocken, and Legopolis do work as a trilogy, uh, you get all of that story on Blu-ray because we already have Castro we already have. Castrovalva for season 19. So now you get to see the first two parts of that with Legopolis. You go ahead and get the updated effects for Legopolis, which is nice. And again, you're getting another Tom Baker season out because he has seven. So why not, you know, again, try to get the range started off well. You know, with the third release, it's still kind of getting its feet under it. Even though the sets were selling well, we saw how fast season 12 sold out originally. I mean, I'm so grateful they did a re-release of that even though I have the original release. But I also have uh, the second release back there as well. Um, so I think it's a good idea to get another Tom out. People like Tom. Tom's going to sell well. I think that was a clever idea. I was just surprised it was 18. But again, it makes sense with the last two stories and the first story of season 19 acting as a trilogy. And I absolutely love the art for season 18. That's one of my favorites. And I like season 18. That's, I know that's a hit or miss season with people, which is another reason I thought it was risky. I know season 18 is not Tom's most popular. I love it. It has a very unique feel to it. Uh, but I was still surprised. And then we had, of course, season 10. So another 70s season because 18, of course, was technically an 80s season. So we're, we're kind of bouncing out our 70s and 80s here, uh, at least at this point. Going ahead and getting another 70s season. And it's good to go ahead and get a John Pertwee out. He's one of the class. He's one of the popular doctors. Definitely one of the popular classic doctors. He's one of my favorite doctors, ranking at number three on my favorite doctors list, appropriately enough. Uh, and I think season 10 was the one to go with. It's the one that's least problematic to do since there was only one episode missing from it. And that's episode three of Planet of the Daleks. The rest were the original surviving masters. And episode three had already been restored to color, although I believe the restoration they used on the Blu-ray was a new restoration, uh, which in my opinion doesn't look as good as the DVD restoration. I think the DVD restoration of episode three looks better than the Blu-ray restoration personally. Uh, again, like the artwork here, it's nice to go ahead and get a John out, especially one that's gonna look good since most of it survives. Plus season 10 is just a good season. You're also going ahead and getting Troughton and Hartnell into the range because Three Doctors is this season. So you're getting Troughton and uh, Hartnell into the range and on Blu-ray so people can kind of celebrate that. Plus you have Carnival of Monsters, which is fantastic. Frontier in Space and Planet of the Daleks are good. I like Frontier in Space. It does rush to ending. Planet of the Daleks is a little ant, but I know a lot of people like it. And then Green Death, which of course is a classic and one of the best companion departure. So it's a really strong season as well. Uh, so I think that was a good choice. Now I think the next one surprised people. I think because the rumors were we were going to get 10 and 26. And then I remember rumors floating around about potentially a Collins set, but everybody seemed to think it was going to be 22. So I was very surprised when 23 was announced. I didn't see that coming. I figured we'd get 22 before 23. But I think 23 being only 
four stories might have been a little easier, even though they did give us all the different versions of it, the different edits of it, the nice trialless version of Vervoids. It just goes to show the love that goes into these, because I love the trialless version of Vervoids with the updated effects and the updated intro. I love that updated intro. So it's nice to go ahead and get season 23 out. You know, there are some of the not as strong seasons that do need to come out somewhere and not be left toward the ends like some of the DVD range stories were to go ahead and just throw them in there. And I think, you know, five sets in at this point, I think you can go ahead, especially when you're trying to get several different doctors, you can go ahead and get one of Collins out and go ahead and get 23, test the water, see how that's gonna work. <clears throat> see if the fans will accept that. I think a lot of us had already kind of gotten in mind, we want all of them. <clears throat> I knew by this point I wanted all of them. I kind of wanted all of them from the go, but I knew by this point I wanted all of them. Plus I, um, had I seen all of, I can't remember if I'd seen all of the Trial of the Time Lord by the time I got this, I forget. Uh, I know I'd seen part of it, I think I'd seen it all. I think I'd seen all of it actually by the time I got the set, but I knew I wanted to get it. Uh, and I like uh, several of the stories, even if I think there's no masterpiece in it. Really the only one I don't care for is Mind Warp, and I still love having Brian Blessed in it. So I think that was a good, safe choice there. Well, maybe not safe, but I think it was a good choice to go ahead and get a column out and I was just surprised it was 23 over 22. Uh, and then we got 26, which also surprised me. Like I knew the rumor were, were we were gonna get 26, but I kind of figured doing McCoy, they would have done a different season first. Like I figured we would have got 25 first. I figured they would wanna save the final season of Classic Who for later in the run, maybe even to be the last one in the run, but to, to do it later in the run, I wouldn't think it would be like the sixth set um, and I, w I didn't think they'd do 24 because it's his weakest, especially not right after 23. And season 24 does tend to have a bad reputation, which is, does not deserve for the record. So I, I figured 25 would be the safe bet. Some people think 25 is the best season. It would be definitely one to good start out with. You got Remembrance of the Daleks and that. So that's kind of the one I figured they'd go with. So I was surprised we got 26. I'm glad we did, uh, especially since, uh, you know, if we hadn't got it when we did, we wouldn't have had Nick Parsons on that wonderful making of for uh, Curse of Fenrir because Nick Parsons passed away right around when the set was coming out. 96 years old, as I recall. And it was wonderful to see that. And plus, I just like season 26. It's such a strong season. Uh, I think it ranked uh, 12th when I was ranking my all-time Doctor sets. It was like 12th place right up in there. It was really high. Um, and sometimes I might even rank it higher. So I really like that. Battlefield is, is good. Uh, Ghost Light is phenomenal. Uh, very atmospheric. Curse of Fenric is the essential McCoy story, in my opinion. Um, definitely a, a must-watch for any Doctor Who fans, especially for any 7th Doctor fan. And then Survival is good. I think it uh, gets a little more credit for being the final story, but uh, it's still good. And so I think 26 was a good one. It's nice to get a McCoy in there. Uh, and then after that, we jumped to 14. So we're back to another Tom. I was surprised we got a second Hinchcliffe before a Williams. I would have thought we would have gotten another Williams. Now we knew the rumors were we were getting 14 before it was officially announced, but I kind of figured a Williams would happen before we got another Hinchcliffe. But it's another strong choice because season 14 is very dark. It's a very good season. Again, the Hinchcliffe era. A lot of Stone Cold classics in it, like Robots of Death, Deadly Assassin, uh, Hand of Fear, Talons of Wing Chiang. I really like this season. It's got a lot of strong, strong stories in it. I think Face of Evil is very underrated, uh, even though I think Deadly Assassin and Robots of Death are very overrated, while still being good. And Master Man Dragger, I, I also really like and think is underrated. So that was another solid one. You know, that gives us our third Tom Baker season. I love his outfit here. That's a perfect... Uh, picture of him there and then we hit the COVID gap now COVID had dropped after right out not long after season 26 came out but most of 14 had been done already excuse me so it wasn't overly affected except for I think enough of them weren't produced originally and they had to reissue it to get the numbers up but when we really ran into problems with the pandemic <coughs> was the gap between 14 and eight, which was what, eight months, 10 months, something like that. It was a while before we got season eight. And I was astounded that we got season eight next because so much of season eight uh, 
it was not in the original Masters. Only three of the 25 episodes are the original Masters. Uh, episodes one and four of Claws and episode four of the Daemons. All of the originals come from other sources, and some of them looked a bit rough. Uh, I kind of figured we would get 11 or 9. That was always the rumor, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9. I remember at 1.9 actually had more rumors going on because we know we knew they had done remaster work for Time Monster, so a lot of us started thinking, well, maybe not 11, it'll be 9, and then 8 got announced. Now, it makes sense looking about it because uh, it, it, come, it comes out just in time for the 50th anniversary of the Master. And that's probably why it was released when it did, to celebrate the Master's 50th anniversary, um, which is really nice. It's a nice celebration of the Master. It's a nice tribute to Delgado, and it's really nice, again, having Sasha on the set watching Delgado's performance. Now, this was good for me because I hadn't seen all of uh, Season 8 before the set came out. I'd seen Terror a long time ago, uh, and I owned Colony in Space, and... Um, Was that it? I think that might have been it. I own Colony in Space and I'd seen Terror. I think that might have been it. I knew I'd never seen Mind of Evil. I don't think I'd ever seen the Daemons. I don't think. And I knew I'd never seen Claws of Axos. <coughs> well, something went down wrong right there. <coughs> <coughs> don't die, bro. Don't die. Um but it's a good season. I really actually really like season eight. Uh, definitely the unit season. So it was nice to get that out and to and for, it gave them a good choice to show us what they could do with the restoration work. I love the uh, restoration work for most of the episodes, even though Mind of Evil could look better. It's a miracle we have it at all uh, in color. And I love the updated effects for Terror of the Zygons since it's mostly spent on cleanup and making the CSO look better. Uh, and the backgrounds look better. That, that's really well done. It's a very minimalist approach, uh, for the most part, outside of that shot from the uh, nesting consciousness manifesting at the end, which is really well done. And then after season eight, <coughs> something really went down wrong. <coughs> they really jumped around to season 24. I think this is a good time to get 24 out. We'd kind of been starving for Doctor Who news and that big gap between eight, or between 14 and eight. I think we were just hungry getting eight, you know, we were happy, but then we were like, more, 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 where's the next one? So they can go ahead and get season 24 out. Again, people are still, you know, this is 2021. People are still kind of in lockdown. People are starved for stuff to watch, stuff to do. Why not go ahead and get 24 out there? I love the cover with him holding the spoons. That's what I wanted him uh, holding. And plus, I, I like season 24. I think it's underrated. I think it's good to go ahead and get that out now when people are starved to get new content and stuff to do. And plus, you save 25 to kind of have the McCoy era go out with a bang later. So I think that's a good choice there. And then not long afterwards, we got 17, so we get our first Williams season. I remember being surprised about it being 17. I expected 15 or 16. <clears throat> I wasn't upset by it because I had never seen uh, Nightmare of Eden or Creature from the Pit, which are both underrated stories in my opinion. I love season 17. <coughs> But I figured we'd get either 15 or 16. I don't know why that was just on my mind. I wouldn't figure they'd give us the third one uh, of the Williams era. But we did get 17, especially with the release of Shada on Blu-ray not long before. But they did, and I love the fact they put Shada on it. I love the fact they did the episodic version of Shada. Again, going that extra mile for it, rescoring the cliffhangers. So we have actually have cliffhangers slightly. I love the little extra touches they put to make Shada feel as much as it could like an original story and having it on here. I enjoy season 17, so I was happy to get it. I was just surprised. It was nice to have a Williams set come. I think we would do another Tom at that point. And then of course we had the long wait for 22 with everything going on in the Ukraine and Poland and that area. Uh, we had the announcement for 22, what about six months before we actually got 22. It was nice to get 22, I think. Um, <clears throat> it was a good time to bring it out. You kind of finish off Colin's run, not quite, because we still don't have twi Twin Dilemma, but we finish off his seasons, really. So you, you have both of his complete seasons. You actually have a Doctor completed on the shelf. Again, not counting Twin Dilemma. Uh, so, I mean, we can look at this and go, hey, we got both of Colin's box sets. We've kind of completed a Doctor on the shelf, at least. 
that's pretty neat. That 22 artwork is gorgeous. That is one of the best ones. I love the vibrant background on this. It looks absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> and then season 22 has got some good stories. I had only seen half of season 22 before the set came out. And a lot of that I hadn't seen in a while. <coughs> so that was a nice treat for me to be able to not only watch three stories I'd never seen before, but to watch uh, three stories I haven't seen in a while. That was really nice because the only Tom uh, Collins story I'd owned on the DVD sets was uh, Twin Dilemma, oddly enough. Um, and plus it enabled me to finally see all of Collins' era, which was really nice. And uh, it's nice, again, having them next to each other on the shelf. And then we jumped to season two. And it was very nice to get a 60s season. Uh, part of me was surprised. I was ready for it. I wanted it. Two makes the most sense. I always figured if we got one first, it would be two or six. But two always made the most sense. Uh, the only thing making me wonder if we'd get it is whether they would try to wait until may maybe uh, the Crusade got animated, even though I knew that was unlikely just due to historicals being hard to animate for various reasons. Uh, but two makes the most sense with only having two episodes missing, both of those from the same story, and plus having another 37 episodes to make up to that. <coughs> it's such a mammoth season. The 60s seasons are huge. They average about 40 episodes some a little more, some a little less, but they're averaging about 40 episodes a season. That's a lot of work to do, especially on these more complete seasons, to restore them. Um, now, we don't have quite as many, I think, bonus stuff, but I think a lot of that's just because so many people from that time have passed on, sadly. Uh, but they do have some neat things on there I like. I love the simplicity of the design here. And it's nice just to have a Hartnell on the shelf, and it's a, it's a Whopper 9 disc. That's the biggest one so far. It looks really good there on the shelf. It's nice to know they're working on the 60s ones. I'm really looking forward to getting a trout man. So I think that was a good time to go ahead and get that out. To kind of let everybody know that if they had to, they would just use Telesnap reconstructions because that's all we can do. They're not going to necessarily wait on animations. <clears throat> and I agree with that decision. And the, the Telesnap for Crusade works really well. Though with episode four, you do need, do need to watch it with the... Uh, captions turned on that explain what's going on or part four gets a little confusing at places <clears throat> and then of course we got season nine which is nice to get another part we set in the fold it's nice that we have the katie manning trilogy i think it's a good choice to do nine um because i mean katie's still around katie loves doing doctor who stuff katie's always a joy to watch i love me some katie manning so it's nice bringing her in to do this getting her on behind the sofa i hope she's on behind the sofa for season seven and eleven too even if Joe's not in them. I want her there. I love Katie Manning. And it gets us kind of the Katie Manning trilogy. And plus we have, you know, three seasons right here in a row with eight, nine, and ten. And they look good on the shelf next to each other. I really, really uh, enjoy that. And plus the artwork looks pretty good. It's got a couple little things. The face looks a little weird. But um, that looks good on there as well. I think it was a strong choice. Plus it's a good season. I had not seen... Uh, the Mutants or the Time Monster. Those were the only McCoy uh, Pertwee stories I hadn't seen yet at the time. So I'm now seeing all of uh, Why well, I keep trying to say McCoy Pertwee's run. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was nice to be able to complete that. And the restoration work looks good. Season 9 is interesting because it's almost half and half of what survives and what doesn't on the original Masters. It's 26 episodes. I believe 11 episodes are original Masters and 15 episodes are not. So the ones that are original masters, of course, are going to look gorgeous. Um, and even the ones that aren't, they have put in some good time restoring them. The time monster looks absolutely fantastic, I must say. So I've really been pleased with how this set came out. And I think that's pretty neat. Again, most of them even numbered sets. But we're at the point now to where we can kind of start making educated guesses as what's coming next. We're at the point now to where it feels more like filling in holes, filling in missing slots. I mean, because think about it. We have the final season here at the end, so we know how it's going to end. And we have almost the beginning of it. We have season two, so the only one left coming out that's going to go in front of that is season one. Other than season one, everything else is going to be plugging a hole. Everything else is going to be filling a slot. So, you know, like I'm looking at that going, okay, I'm going to, you know, when 13 gets announced, I'll be able to fill that right here. When 15 and 16 get announced, I'll fill that here. 
And we already have several runs. You know, we've got 17, 18, and 19 right here in a row. We've got 22, 23, and 24 right here in a row. We have 7, 8, 9, or uh, 8, 9, and 10 right here in a row. So a lot of us just plugging in holes at this point. And it's nice to be at that point in this to where it just feels like we're plugging in holes on the shelf. And I absolutely love that. Let's talk about the artwork now. We'll go with each one with the artwork and watch how the artwork has gone. Has gone. I really wish I'd brought something to drink over here. I, um, we'll talk about how the artwork has gotten a little more elaborate. Like season 12 is a little more basic than some. Uh, you just kind of have the time tunnel effect in the background, which works perfectly because the color of the box, the gray of the box, is that kind of same color as the silver of the vortex. So it works perfectly. And then you just kind of have this big blast of purple right down here. It's definitely a little more simplistic than uh, a lot of the later ones. It still looks fantastic, and it's one of my favorite ones, to be honest. And of course, Tom's hand holding the Sonic's kind of obscured by the lettering, because when Lee drew it, they didn't quite know where the logo was going to be, like they thought it might be up here originally. So it's a little covered up by the logo, but again, it's the first one. And then of course we had season 19, which is a great shot. I love the portrait of Davison. Uh, I do wish the background was a little more saturated like the later sets. It's a little too light to where I feel like you don't see it that well. It looks good, but it's a little too light. I wish it was a little more darker with a little more color to make the color pop more like the new ones do. Now, then we got 18. I love 18. 18 is also one of my favorites. And you have these beautiful colors here with this kind of magenta and this kind of bluish teal right here, which are the colors that tend to pop out a lot on the 80s sets, especially that kind of magenta pink is on a lot of the 80s sets. You see that a lot. Uh, with that wonderful shot of Tom. And again, that purple blast kind of like season 12 here. And I kind of wondered if each doctor was going to have kind of their own color themes. Now, it is turned out not being like that, but I kind of wonder if that was maybe one of the original plans with him waving, which is a very Tom Baker thing to do. I love that shot of Tom. That's just perfect. That look on his face is perfect Tom Baker. It's the best face shot I think we've got of Tom so far in the sets. Perfect. Uh, I really like 18, and I love the purple for the enemies right there. And then we got 10, which of course has the uh, howl around effects for his opening, which looks really good. Again, they're a little fainter, a little lighter. I wish they were a little more saturated, a little more vibrant, like Seasons 9 is, so the colors popped more. Uh, especially with them next to each other on the shelf, the Season 9 just pops a little more, but it still looks really good. I think that was a great choice. And you, even uh, right here, you can see part of the Halloran effects on both of these right here on the bottom. And then we got, I have to remember what comes next sometimes, 23 with this explosive uh, colors here, which looks really good. Season 26, I really like. Again, 23 and 26, kind of continuing that magenta pink color with a little bit of teal in it. Uh, I don't really care for the teal that they use for the logo there, uh, but the rest of it looks good. I love the background with just all the rocks floating in it. That looks really good. The 26 one really pops, really well done. Um, and then after 26, we got 14. And I love how it used the tunnel. That was really neat. And uh, the red really pops. It's a very dark season. So I think the red looks good on it with the blue writing to differentiate it and really stand out. But I love that they went with the sewer tunnel. That's just clever. It fits in with talons. It fits in with being a dark, dank kind of season. I really enjoyed that and the look on his face. Man, that red really pops. And I'm glad he went with the Sherlock outfit from Talons. That's a really iconic, good-looking outfit. It's an excellent choice on these part. And then season eight with the uh, Axon walls on the background. And I love the fact that the photo here seems more solid. It looks more like a picture and less like a painting. Some of the other sets looks more like a painting he's done, whereas this one looks more photorealistic of Pertwee with him holding that. And that shot of Delgado on here is perfect. I love that he seems to be larger than most villains usually are since it's kind of his season and that look he's doing with the, it's perfect for Delgado, really well done. Uh, so I really liked that one. The red and the kind of yellowish orange right there goes really well together. They, uh, they contrast really well together. Uh, and then after nine, we got 24 with that kind of magenta color, again with that magenta color. Now there's a little bit of a greenish here which shows up better on the digital artwork than it does on here, because again, the background's a little too light. It needed to be saturated a little more like the later sets have been. 
Uh, it still looks good, but you can't really see that. It's easy to miss it. Whereas on the actual artwork digitally, it looks really good. But I like it. It's a little more simplistic. Uh, the background is not as varied. It's like 26. It's more like the beginning of his intro. But it looks really good, and I'm glad he's holding the spoons. It's definitely time of the Ronnie on the front. But him holding the spoons is just perfect season 24. I love that. And then we got 17, which also kind of has that basic background. There's not a lot going on there. You have the rods for the time machine for the city. Uh, I do love the fact Tom's holding something in his left hand instead of his right. That's very season 17 being off kilter and different. And the look on Tom's face kind of sums up the season pretty well. Even if I do wish it had been a little more of a bigger Tom Baker gram, it still fits really well. But there's not a lot going on in the background. It's more about Tom on the cover, the villains on the cover, and the, the colors on the color than it is the background, unlike the 80 seasons where the background tends to pop more. There's a lot of gray going on here with just the colors around it. You know, the red on one side, the kind of blue on the other, and then the green in the middle. There's a lot of colors going on in this season, uh, which works really well. Then for, what came after that? 22, 22s is gorgeous. 22 is where they started making the background more saturated. They, 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 they're more vibrant, they pop. They really pop on the shelf. 22 is where they really started to do this. And I remember Lee mentioning in that video when him and uh, the girl that used to run the Doctor Who channel were unboxing her sets, he mentioned they were gonna be like that going forward. Uh, I love 22. This is one of the best ones. That background is phenomenal. That blue looks so good. With the red down here to kind of contrast with it, kind of the opposite of what's going on with 14, that looks really good. The look on Colin's face, that's the perfect, perfect shot of Colin for this box set right here. It looks really good. The enemies look good on it. Again, this seemed like a stepping stone, like he hit a milestone here. I love what is going on with that background. And then we got two. Now, two is interesting because it goes with a much simpler approach like the 70s ones tend to do uh, for the 60s here. And they just use the howl around effect, which is perfect for, you know, the first 60s set. Uh, but the colors on it, again, really pop. They're more saturated like they all have been since 22. That blue looks really good with that splash of yellow behind him, which makes me wonder if maybe the season three one will be kind of that color of yellow. Uh, but that light, light blue with the background and the lettering looks so good. I tend to love blue. And blue, that light blue especially, looks really good. That's a wonderful shot of Hartnell. You're not used to seeing Hartnell in color and what looks like you know, 4K practically, HD, you know, where you can see all the wrinkles and stuff and he looks like he's standing right beside you. We're used to seeing black and white, low resolution Hartnell. So it's really interesting to see this kind of shot where you can see every wrinkle and you can see him in color and he's like he's standing right there. We're not used to that. And then the portrait of the enemies is really good. I love the season two set uh, because it has this simplistic design, but it just looks so good and has such a presence on the shelf. And then we have season nine, and that purple just pops right off. Like when you're looking at this shelf, that's one of the things your eyes are drawn to because again, the background is more saturated, it's more vibrant. The colors are really there, they pop off. Ever since, like 22, two and nine look amazing on a shelf. You notice them, your eyes are drawn to them. Now, his face is a little weird, and he does kind of have the extra finger thing going on, but you barely notice that. And you probably, I never noticed it until it was pointed out to me. Now, I'm a little upset Delgado's not on the cover, but other than that, it's weird to have Alpha Centauri, but not Delgado. But I love the fact it goes again with the howl around effect, but it kind of embellishes it a bit, like he does kind of with the 80s set, to kind of add a little oomph to them. Kind of looks like a lava lamp. And they look really good next to each other, 9 and 10, almost like the intro itself, when it starts out red, and then the colors invert, and then it kind of goes into the, you know, into this. It's kind of neat. That's why I hope season 7 does the red ones. So you can actually kind of see the change. Um, and yeah, they, they all look really good. It's interesting how the decades, I think, are going to act different. Like the 80 sets and the 70 sets tend to look a lot different. The 60 set too. Like all the 60 sets could technically do variations of the howl around and work. I don't know if I'd want them to do that, but you could get away with that. I do think season one should also be the howl around, just like season two, because that's the best way to start the run. And I think... Uh, Troughton's first season should probably also be a howl around. That makes sense. Uh, but see, but you look at the 70s sets, and most of the 70s sets are pulled either from the intro or from a story. And they're translated over to the box sets pretty faithfully, with not a whole lot of embellishing. 
Like uh, season nine is basically the axon wall, and that looks a lot like the axon wall. Now season nine does embellish the howl around a little bit, but not much. It just adds a little to it. It still is very recognizably the howl around from his intro. The season 10 one looks like the howl around from his intro. Season 12 looks like the time tunnel from Tom's intro. Season 14 is obviously the tunnel from Talon's. Season 17 is obviously the time machine from City of Death. And so the 70s ones either pull from the intro pretty directly or they're an element for a story. Whereas the 80s ones starting with 18 kind of take approach to the intro, the kind of Starfield intro used in the 80s, but embellishes them to make them look better. Like Lee does a lot of times on the back image when he takes an iconic shot from an episode, but he makes it look so much better. He kind of takes more artistic license on the 80s. Like even Tom Seasons looks, very, season 18 looks very different from his other seasons with that star field. It looks more grand than say the 80s intro. Same thing with season 19 and all of these. Uh, season 22 especially kind of has that look going around it, that kind of thing going on at the peripheral of his intro, but it, it makes it pop more. It makes it look better. Same thing with season 23. Season 24 is just lifted a little more directly from the intro, but it's still embellishing. But season 26 is definitely embellishing his intro there, making it look better. So that's quite fascinating to me that I think the 60s, 70s, and 80s sets are all going to have their kind of distinctive look. You can kind of tell what decade they fit into. And that fascinates me. I've rambled on a bit. I didn't mean to. But I like where we are halfway through this. I'm curious to see... Uh, which one's going to be next? Is it going to be 20? Is it going to be 16? Is it going to be 25? So let me know what you think of the collection sets so far, now that we are halfway through the classic, classic collection range. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Other things to do, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so you never miss out on another video. I also have a Patreon if you like what I do and would like to contribute to what I do. There's a link to that down in the description below. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane, Colin Coney, and Finn Perkins. I do appreciate their support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. I also have a P.O. Box if there's anything you would like to send me to look at and review. And a link to my Amazon wish list is down there as well. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.